Hello, my friends. Paul White here. Thanks for joining me today. A little bit different uh, format, a little bit different camera view. That's because today I'm shooting this little video on my phone. And the reason I'm doing that is to maintain some continuity with all of the things that you're about to see. For the next half hour or so, I'm going to present to you the videos that we shot on our 2023 trip to Israel. Um, just my phone, myself and my wife sometimes shooting little videos where I would, she would hold the phone and I would, uh, step out of frame and describe what you're seeing or maybe step into frame and, uh, just try to minister a little bit based upon some of the sites we were seeing, places that Jesus had walked and places that are mentioned in the Bible. Um, we didn't get as many of these as I wanted because I was trying to be thoughtful of the other people in our group. I was trying to be thoughtful of other tourists. And so I only shot in places and moments where I could be quiet, alone, and away. And that those moments were few and far between, as you can imagine. So sometimes I wanted to say more, but I was a little rushed. I never had a lot of time to put much thought into any of the videos. It was more like, hey, we got five minutes. Here's a spot. No one's here. Let me say something. And so every time I would hit, we would finish, I would think, oh, I should have said that. Or I should have said that. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to lay out all the videos in chronological order. Natasha and I were in Israel in March of 23. At the time I'm shooting this, we've been home about eight days. And we started in Tel Aviv. We went to Joppa. And from there, we moved up the coast to Caesarea Maritima. We went to Nazareth. We went to um, Tiberias. We went into Bethlehem. We went to Jerusalem. All kinds of places. And so what we'll do is we're just going to put them up chronologically. And I'm going to do a voiceover. So the audio will change when we get to some of the videos because it's me voicing over here in studio using our studio mic. And so uh, they'll be a little cleaner and I'll voice over and, and just talk about what you're seeing and why and uh, what impact it might've had on me. And then whenever it's a video that we shot, uh, we'll just cut straight to that. And that's uh, that's the camera, or I'm sorry, it's the phone audio. Um, you're you're used to f f uh, videos on your iPhones and so you'll, you'll know what's up, but um, and then when those break, we'll, we'll jump back into putting the videos up. This is, I just thought this would be a fun journey to let you see what we saw and maybe to hear a little commentary on my part about what it all meant. Um, I'll jump back in here and do this again at the end and sum it all up for you. I hope you enjoy Paul White Ministries goes to Israel. We started our journey in Tel Aviv. Waters of the Mediterranean roll up the beach. Tel Aviv sets right next to the city of Jaffa, or in biblical words, Joppa. And here's the approach to an old house, Peter's residence or dwelling place in the book of Acts. We'll come back to that in a moment. Our first video takes place outside of Joppa. Hey, I'm standing on the uh, Mediterranean. Uh, I've got old Joppa behind me. You can see the big tower at the point. This is the old Joppa seaport. And why this is important in biblical terms is because old Joppa is where Jonah took off on his trip to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, bought a ticket to a boat to head to Tarshish, and a lot of scholars think Tarshish might mean open water, so that Mediterranean that goes as far as the eye can see would have been the direction that Jonah goes away from the presence of the Lord. You can see boats heading out into the water now. They've been doing this for thousands of years off of one of the oldest seaports in the world. And, uh, this has been an exciting to get to go to Joppa because, of course, with having done so much work with Greater Than Jonah, and knowing that Peter ends up going to Joppa um, and, and ultimately then takes the gospel to Cornelius' house. Jonah takes the gospel to Nineveh, which is up the coast. He should have went to Assyria, but instead he tries to run away from the presence of the Lord. 
I was struck by, we went deep into the art of Ojapa today. Uh, we also shot a little video we'll show you at the house of Simon the Tanner, which is where Peter raises Tabitha from the dead and also where he gets his revelation of the animals in the sheet. And I was thinking as we went into this port city and then as we stood in front of Simon's house of how we are Gentiles and I'm standing outside of that and standing right next to this port where the call went forth to go tell Gentiles the gospel and because of the those men that answered that call, people like me, so many of you, were introduced to the gospel eventually. So that's, that's cool. And it's a, it was kind of a powerful reminder of thank, the thankfulness that we get the gospel, but also to do what it is he calls us to do. So I want to share that with you so that you got to see that at least from afar. Um, a lot of what is, is there now has been there several hundred years. We don't know that there's anything that really dates as far back as Jonah, but this was the point out of which he went out to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. Hi, we, I'm standing in front of the home of Simon the Tanner in Old Jaffa. This is Old Joppa. You probably remember this story from Acts where Peter comes to Joppa and he raises Tabitha from the dead. Well, we believe that this is the house that Peter was in when he raised Tabitha from the dead and then he stayed here and on top of this roof had a vision which God lowered these unclean animals down. This is the famous moment where Peter says, Lord, I don't eat that which is unclean. And God said, don't call that unclean which I call clean. We're in Joppa and we're going to get to see some things that connect our Jonah story and our Peter story. But I thought this one was a pretty cool one to share with you that might put a little perspective onto that famous story that you've heard so many times. That's an old city, Caesarea, now called Caesarea Maritima. Caesarea was a spot that shows itself in the Gospels time and again, but it shows itself as a place of really pagan authority. This is where Pontius Pilate and Herod maintained their residences. In fact, you can see the old foundation of Herod's, Herod's palace as you look into the waters of the Mediterranean. That would have also been a natural pool that he built on the edge of his estate so that seawater could come in for his enjoyment. You can see the port that runs all across all of this Caesarea. We also got the chance to walk through the Hippodrome. This would have been where great chariot races would have taken place. And you can see the you know, stone seating that would surround the Hippodrome so that people could come and watch these events and this is it from the other side. You can see the length of that hippodrome that runs all the way down. There. Coming to you from uh, Caesarea Maritima, now called Caesarea Maritima. Um, a very important part of the book of Acts happens in Caesarea. Behind me is uh, off to the corner is the would have been the ruins of King Herod's palace. Uh, would have also been the residence of Pontius Pilate when he was not in Jerusalem. Uh, not much standing today, but quite an architectural marvel in its day. Why Caesarea is so important is because it's really the, um, well, for you and I, for Gentiles, this is an amazing moment. This was the place where Peter comes after the house we showed you in Joppa. He comes to Caesarea to the house of the centurion Cornelius, and the Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles. Our salvation really begins in that moment right there in Caesarea. Also, you can see the remnants of the excavated Hippodrome, um, the large racing arena, uh, gladiatorial games would have been held here. Um, this is the site of what at the time was the most Roman city in Judea, um, and it was the site, not coincidentally, of some of the greatest proclamations of the gospel for Gentiles in the book of Acts. A lot of Acts occurs there. Also, in, in no way to see it from here, and we couldn't shoot video that close. It's just too many swarms of people, but this is also the place where Paul appeals to King Agrippa uh, and tries to convert him to Christ. Paul's put in prison right back there for a couple of years, probably writes, possibly writes his prison epistles before taking, wanting to take off across that sea and go to Rome. Um, this has been a fantastic spot 
in our journey, and I wanted to share this with you, another moment of thanks for the gospel to all of us. This is the view from Mount Carmel, the spot where Elijah has his showdown with the prophets of Baal. They look out across the valley and see many of the places that are talked about in the Old Testament. And from there it was on to Nazareth, the city in which Jesus would live all the way up until the time of his ministry. It also now revered as the place where Jesus was conceived. This is a church that has built up around that event, the Church of the Conception. In fact, inside the church, as you can see, lines of people will pass the spot where church history believes that uh, Mary and Joseph lived while they were in Nazareth. It's not unusual in the Holy Lands to find that a lot of the events that you see in the Gospels now have churches built up around them. And that's exactly what this is. I was intrigued by the iconography, the architecture, the artwork inside of these churches. It was quite spectacular and if nothing else it shows you the church across time and how they've tried to honor and venerate these places. This is just another set of shots of Nazareth just outside of that church and what the church looks like from the outside. There was even a, a shot there of some very, very old housing and architecture. And this is the architect, the uh, archaeological digs of the space beneath the church. Morning on the Sea of Galilee. This takes place in Tiberias. You see the Sea of Galilee not too long after the sun. And from there we spent some time at the well, Mount of the Attitudes, a place where it is believed that Jesus delivered his sermon on the Mount. We're coming to you from the beautiful Sea of Galilee, also the Mount uh, of Beatitudes. This is the spot where it's believed that Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, covered in Matthew's chapters 5, 6, and 7. You can see pilgrims singing and sharing scripture, and this has just been a, a beautiful spot to reflect on the time that Jesus spent with his disciples and, and to take a moment and uh, realize that the, the great Beatitudes comes from this passage, this moment, and this place. Um, little gentle rain starting to fall this morning, um, but uh, such a wonderful, beautiful atmosphere. Um, I know that we don't know exactly how long Jesus would have been here teaching with his disciples, and maybe not even the entire sermon in one day, but we read it in just a few moments. Um, and then we live our lives, really as followers of Christ, living out that Sermon on the Mount. And so it's been an, a, a, a pretty awesome experience here today. And I wanted to share just a moment of it and just a shot of it with all of you. From there, we go to Capernaum, the town of Jesus. Unofficial, sort of official headquarters where Jesus would maintain most of his ministry during his ministry years. So when great healings occurred here, great sermons occurred here. This is not the interior of the synagogue in Capernaum. The flooring and the walls are dated from about the third century, but and it is inside uh, you can see the actual uh, first central foundation. This is the synagogue of Capernaum. This was one of the more impactful stops for me. It lets us see so much of what Jesus was doing and the housing 
like you can see here, the foundations of the houses that have been unearthed. We record a couple of videos for you in Capernaum because this was so impactful. The first one, right next to the Sea of Galilee. We'll come back to this scene after that. Hey, coming to you from the Sea of Galilee and the seacoast town of Capernaum. This is the place that Jesus lived as an adult and performed his ministry, most of his miracles. He lived here, Peter lived here. I wanted to show you across, directly across the sea, would have been the land of the Gadarenes when Jesus said, let's cross over to the other side. That's the other side, a predominantly Gentile area. And if you'll recall in Mark's story, well, most of the gospels record that, but uh, we just did that in Mark in our podcast recently and talked about how scared they would have been when they got on that boat and a big storm hit the Sea of Galilee between here and there. And they were so frightened, probably because they were going to a place that uh, was predominantly Gentile. That's the famous moment over there on the cliffs where the pigs came off the hill possessed by the demons. And so uh, this has been quite a, a journey today here at Capernaum, seeing the place that Jesus lived and walked and healed. And I wanted to share that with you to get a, a little bit of perspective as to going, if you've ever wondered the distance between one side and the other. We are at Capernaum and we are at the house of Peter. Now, they've built a church over an excavated site. As you can see, the church protects the site, but down underneath the church is the excavated church of, uh, original church of Peter or house of Peter that was turned into a synagogue. In the center would have been the place where Peter lived. And then over the years, as Christians began to gather, they expanded and you can see the expansions all the way out. Uh, this would have been where the early church began to meet in Capernaum. Now, turning left, you go down this street and as you can see, the people gathered and the large stone wall just to the right, that is the synagogue that Jesus would have healed the sick, taught in much of the synagogue confrontations you see hear about in the Gospels happen right there. So when, for instance, in Mark 1, Jesus leaves the synagogue and walks to Peter's house, you can see how close it would have been to walk from that synagogue to the place that Peter lived. Pretty spectacular. There's a lot of places you go in the, in the Holy Land that you don't know where, if it was the actual place. This one you do, Sea of Galilee. Here's another one of great interest. Herod had seven places to reside in what we call the Holy Lands. This is the Herodian Mountain. Okay, we're coming at you today from the uh, Herodian Palace on the mountainside. I've got, we, off to the left you can see some excavation where Herod built his, this fortress on this mountain and seven different places in Judea. This was one of them. When you look out across the valley, and you're looking at Bethlehem and Jerusalem, and you're looking in the vicinity of the Mount of Olives. And to really make a gospel connection, you have that moment where Jesus is with his disciples on the mountain and says to them, If you say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, do not doubt in your heart, you shall have whatever things you ask. It's very possible that this is the mountain. Jesus is pointing at because this represented empire at its worst. It represented the systems of this world. So for Jesus to say, if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, he's putting the sword in the mouth, not in the hand, because this mountain represented the sword in the hand. The sword out of the mouth is the words we speak, but not just saying the words, it's a different system. It's a way of approaching the world that isn't the way of the world. It's also not a mental thing. It's not if you believe in your mind, but it's it's not just principles that you have, but it's something at your foundation. And this has been a tremendous moment to be at this spot. And 
let's step over here and take a look down into the amphitheater. This is also uh, a spot where Herod would have entertained and held plays and theater. Uh, it was such a and, and up to the left. Now it's a little a little theater, but this structure was actually kind of the first luxury box in the ancient world, or at least in Judea, where Herod would host dignitaries and serve concessions and whatever while the rest of the people sat down in the amphitheater. This would have been representative of such luxury and wealth and power. And Jesus seems to be juxtaposing his kingdom on the other side of this kingdom. And by other side, I don't mean over in the glory land, but rather a kingdom that's opposite of the way that Herod uh, would do things. This has been a, a spectacular spot. And as you can look out across the valley, it's impossible to see it now, but the Dead Sea is way off to the right. Um, quite, a, quite an impressive moment. Translated, and now a cable car ride up to the cliffs above Jericho. Here we are walking through a cliffside monastery dug into the side of the mountain of Jericho, the mountain of temptation, where it is believed that Jesus suffered his temptation in the wilderness. There, it's on to the Dead Sea. Qumran, the place of the Dead Sea Scrolls. As you look out from the place of those scrolls, you can see the Dead Sea dominating the horizon because of the saltiness of the air and the, the low elevation. The Dead Sea Scrolls were preserved in caves on the mountainside for centuries, only to have been discovered in the mid 20th century and confirm the writings of the Old Testament. And then it was off to Jerusalem, the old city, the Wailing Wall, which you can see the Jewish schools that meet near the wall, different Jewish sects that study Torah, various Jewish writings at the Jerusalem Wall. And in the old city then, we went on to the Temple Mount place where now the Muslim Dome of the Rock resides, as well as a large mosque. And then on to the pools of Bethesda, the excavated pools. This is the place where Jesus performed the miracle on the man who had been there some 38 years. Praise Praise Fiction. 
some mosaics and artwork inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The church, by the way, that has been here since the 4th century, built by Constantine's mother, considered in most of Christendom to be the most holy site. And there's the sepulchre itself, the church built up around what was believed to be the empty tomb. Again, we'll see another one. This is a church built up around the site of the upper room, and then a church built up around the site of Gethsemane, Church of All Nations, which of course resides near the Mount of Olives. That stone that you see, we'll come back at the end of this video, is the place where Jesus was believed to have prayed and sweat his great drops of blood. Here's Jerusalem in the old city from the Mount of Olives. You can see the Dome of the Rock across the valley. That's the Temple Mount, the center of your frame. And just a little more of the old city. And that led us to a pretty amazing stop. St. Peter's Church at Gallicantu. Gallicantu, a word that means cock's crow. A church that built up around the place where Peter denied Christ, but also built over dungeons. Believed to be the place that possibly Jesus was held before he went to see Pilate, and certainly the place where Peter. Our Pleasant little park, right? Right off the side of the old city. Well, let's describe what it is you're seeing. Okay, today we are standing in hell. Uh, we are in what in ancient times was called the Vale of Hinnom, or the Greek word Gehenna. And you still might not recognize that. That gets translated into the English as hell. In the King James Version, when Jesus talks about the place where the of hell, where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched, he's talking about this spot, Gehenna, a trash dump outside the walls of Jerusalem. Off to my right, you can see the ancient walls of Jerusalem. So path through the gates and out into this valley is where the bodies of strangers and vagabonds would be buried. Sewage would be dumped here. Trash would be dumped here. The birds listed over Hinnom constantly looking for something to eat. There was fire that was always burning the trash. The heat and the stench that come from Hinnom was a 24-7 experience. The place where the fire was never quenched, where the worm never died. And so Jesus' references to hell, as we call it, were to this valley. And they were references to the absolute consumption. Um, he wasn't talking about a post-mortem destination when he spoke of it in the Gospels. He was speaking of a very present reality. And he was also playing off of the very end of the prophet of Isaiah, who talks about Israel and Jerusalem going to go into a place where the fire isn't quenched and the worm dies not. And so Jesus takes that prophetic imagery of a nation, a people who had failed to do justice, who was idolatrizing against God. He marries it with the local trash dump and he, come, he brings those together with a message to Jerusalem that essentially was, if you keep rejecting me, all that is left is the trash dump. And as we know, um, 
Jerusalem as it was in the days of Christ would cease to be in that. And just one generation later, when, when literally the old city of Jerusalem would come down, most of it, definitely the Temple Mount would come down, and the fires would burn there and not be quenched. Um, but I wanted to show you, and, and let's just pan out just a little bit, um, that this is now a place that is a beautiful park. And so maybe, just maybe, it's an allegory that the hottest of hell can be transformed into the most beautiful and shady and glorious uh, place of maybe our own little heaven. For those of you that saw our message, Journey to the Eighth Day, you saw this piece of iconography, Anastasis, Resurrection. Check out that sermon for more. Coming at you today from on top of the ramparts. This is the wall that surrounds the old city of Jerusalem. Natasha and I have been walking on this for a few minutes. It actually goes all the way around the old city. But we wanted to stop right here and show you something. Across the street, you see a set of caves. And that is the site of what is known as the Garden Tomb. The Garden Tomb sits down to the left just a little bit from what you see. But if you'll notice, you can see a large indention cave to the left, a little indented cave to the right. And in the mid 19th century, some archeologists began to dig. And that is now believed to possibly be the place of the skull. You can see the skull. Now, there was a little bit of a nose that, that came out from that, a rock ledge that looked a little bit like a nose, but it fell off in a storm about eight years ago that ripped through here. So for centuries, it looked a little bit more like a face. When you go down to the left is the garden tomb. That was not a good place to do a video. That was a silent reflection kind of place. And I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to disrupt or cause issue um, while shooting a video. So I wanted to instead uh, see it from a different angle. And um, of course, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is here in Jerusalem. And that for centuries has been the place that Christians, pilgrims have come to honor the spot that it was believed as early as the third century that uh, Jesus died. And so they've built a church around the place of Golgotha and the place that is now considered the sepulcher, the, the empty tomb. But I wanted to show you that garden from a distance. It, it does have a skull-like appearance. And so if you ever come to Jerusalem, you, you can see two sites that uh, are believed to one have been uh, possibly one of them to have been the place where Jesus died and was resurrected. Tosh and I got to go back into the Church of All Nations. Just us. No one else was there. So hey, if you sweat great drops of blood there, I wanted to touch it. Well, we come to the end of the journey. I hope you've enjoyed this little retrospective with all the videos. I apologize for the way the sound sometimes came and went. I did my best to try and, you know, punch up the sound a little bit on some of the videos and take it down a little bit on others. But I hopefully this was an enjoyable journey. You got to see just a little half hour slice of what took us several days, about a week plus to do. Um, it was the trip of a lifetime. It was so enjoyable and we had such a fantastic time. I want to say thank you again to our viewers, our friends and our partners who helped make it possible for us to go. Because you helped support what we do, it was possible that this was the year that we finally got to do this. And so thank you so very, very much. And hopefully we get to go back again someday. Uh, we are going to continue to to put videos up for you each week, uh, every Sunday at paulwhiteministries.com. You can look for a brand new video. Um, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up in the summer. We're going to be going to some new places. And I also I want to remind our video audience and our audio audience that we have a daily podcast, the Deeper Daily Podcast, and we walk through the Bible. Right now we're walking through the book of Mark here in the spring of 23. Um, you can find it wherever you get your podcast by search for Paul White Ministries. And we, uh, we, we hope we can always continue to shine the spotlight on Jesus. Thank you for joining me today. God